a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogues, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have the convergence this weekend of a national holiday and our coming together in prayer and worship. And I wonder if it would not bode us well to reflect for a moment on our nation in a prayerful sense. We're living at a highly unsettling moment. Does it not seem with greater frequency we read of another mass shooting, school children slaughtered in Newtown, Connecticut, a a theater in Aurora, Colorado, and most recently the heinous act in Charleston, South Carolina. Two quick thoughts. Number one, evil exists in our world. To deny that is to deny the reality of these horrifying acts. And yet, we have told through the history of Christianity that the only thing that can combat evil is Jesus Christ. And yet America is becoming increasingly a nation that's turning his back on him. If you read the recent results of the Pew Report, which I published in the bulletin a few weeks ago, you will recall that the number of atheists in America increased by 4% in just the past seven years. In the Diocese of Erie, mass attendance is down to 26%. We say we are horrified by these evil acts, and yet we turn our back on God and say we don't need him. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but perhaps we in the choir need to evangelize among our own a bit more. Secondly, the action that happened in Charleston, South Carolina a few weeks ago happened to the people who are most marginalized in our society, the people who live and are mired in poverty, and they who are most incarcerated. And then a young man walked into them as they sat together studying the Bible, and after an hour stood up and methodically began to murder them. And yet the next day when he appeared in court, those very marginalized people said, I forgive you. What an incredible lesson for America. Perhaps if we could learn to say in our marriages, I forgive you. In our familial relationships with parents and children and siblings, I forgive you. In the workplace, I forgive you. America would be a much healthier place to live. It is a moment that is unsettling and a moment that calls we who believe to prayer. O beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. O beautiful for pilgrims' feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Amen.